These cheese packs were on special offer in our supermarket this week. Fighting through all the packaging, there's actually some cheese inside, but also a wooden board. Other years, they've been bamboo, but this time it's rubber tree wood. I'm not sure how well it will turn out for this project. I'd rather have the bamboo, but it's worth a try. <laughs> it's rubber tree wood. I've been looking at our cockerel. Magnificent from every direction. I'd like to make some earrings inspired by him if I can. But the challenge to designing cockerel shaped earrings is getting the hanging point right. That is the point where the hook is attached. The obvious place to attach the hook would be through the eye hole. But in this profile shape, you can see the eye isn't in the center, so the earring would hang crooked. And if I made a new hole in the center, it would mess up the design and the tail and the head would be in the way anyway. So I tried starting a design with the eye hole in the, in the middle and arranging the wings either side to keep the balance centered. Which should mean the shape will hang down straight. So I worked up that design until I was happy with it. But by the time I had turned it into the type of file I need for the X-carve, I realized it was way too intricate for the cutter bit I need to use. Or at least the machine would cut this out as fine, but only if each earring was about four inches tall. Not very practical unless you're related to a giraffe. So I needed to go simpler with the design so the cutter can get into all the nooks and crannies of the shape. But somehow that one didn't look much like our cockerel. So I went back to the original side-on profile shape and brought the head and the tail together. That way I hope I can use the gap in the middle as the hanging point. This one might work, so I converted it to an SVG file for the X-carve and set up the cheese board in the machine. This one is 10 millimeters thick. Important to know exactly what you're cutting. This bit is 1.7 millimeters or 1 16th of an inch wide. You can use smaller ones, but only at a speed that is impractically slow. Sometimes those tiny ones just seem to break anyway, without me doing anything with them. Perhaps they're just fed up with life. I started at the cutting rates recommended, but that didn't work. The cut was wider than it should have been and the cockerel had lost its beak completely. I checked all the V-wheel bearings, normally where the problem is, but there was no play there. Basically, it's just that there's enough flex in the whole setup for this kind of thing to happen. For some jobs, it wouldn't matter too much, but it shows up on these fine details. It's a problem, but there are ways around it. First, I moved the cutting point nearer to one end so that there would be less flex in the x-axis and I slowed down the feed rates by a third and this time it worked much better but the beak still looked wrong so I went back to the original vector drawing and fiddled about with it there until there was more room between the eye and the beak and took a bit more away from the back of the head while I was at it and I made a new file and set that up for the X-carve and tried again and this time it worked. Down to the workshop next and the bandsaw. I sliced these carefully against a fence.
and I found that this is still the best way of sanding them. It's a bit risky for the old fingertips, but I'm getting better at it. Both these timbers seem to take translucent colour well, though I'll leave some plain too. And there we have it, the finished product. I'll put them up on our online shop in case you're interested. And here are another couple of designs that seem to work alright too. What do you think? Any more suggestions? I could really use a cheese sandwich right about now. Hmm.